Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. Tesla have just done exactly what I suggest they do. They've launched a new Model 3 long range. New? Wait, there used to be a long range version before, so why is this new? Because the specifications are different. Tesla had to stop producing the previous long range version as they needed more 2170 cells for Giga Texas. There were not enough 4680 cells for the Model Y in Texas, so Tesla ended up using 2170 cells, but there were not enough 2170 cells, so Tesla stopped the Model 3 long range to spare more, and also stopped 2170 cells in the Megapack factories, although that was likely mainly for other reasons too. Giga Texas costs a fortune to run, and Tesla needed to ramp that factory up as much as possible to at least get it to break even, rather than costing a fortune to run each quarter. Obviously 4680 production didn't go close to as we were told, or as Tesla expected, so they had to improvise. Anyway, Tesla have now found alternative ways to bring back the Model 3 long range. However, we don't know what battery they're now using, as it doesn't qualify for the entire tax credit. It means the battery is being imported. It could potentially be using 2170 cells from LG based in Korea. The new long range has 33 fewer miles of range compared to the older one, with just 325 miles, more in line with the Model Y long range. So if they're using 2170 cells, perhaps the battery is now 10 kilowatt hours smaller at around 70 kilowatt hours, which would have saved approximately $1,500 per battery, excluding additional import costs. Not a massive saving, but remember, this version is considerably lower cost than the previous version, so it is acceptable that it's also offer less range too. It's more of a sweet spot, and Elon has talked about how not simply trying to offer more range, but more value and lower prices for more consumers, so this is in line with that. There are also a lot of charges now in the US compared to when the first Model 3 long range was launched. But this would mean also that they are effectively taking 2170 cells that would have been used in Shanghai or Berlin instead. Well, perhaps because Tesla think they can sell the vehicles easier in the US, they are appropriating the scarce 2170s into a market where they can sell the Model 3 at a higher margin, probably due to the tax credit available in the US. However, not all the numbers align with this theory as the weight of this new Model 3 long range is the same as the previous one. Those 10 kilowatt hours of fewer cells don't weigh nothing. They must have affected the weight somehow, unless Tesla are just using the same figures as before and simply haven't updated them, a possibility. However, the reason Berlin is taking so long to ramp is cell scarcity. There aren't enough 2170 cells, and the more they ramp there, the better economy to scale will be. Also, Tesla are wanting to ramp that factory as much as possible, so that would be another reason that this battery is not using 2170 cells. Well, if it's not 2170 cells, then Tesla are obviously using LFP cells then. Possibly, except the standard range battery is already full with LFP cells, meaning there's not any more room to add more cells and thus increase the range a further 55 miles. That's 55 additional miles of range with an extra motor too, which also compromises range. On top of that, we have a 0 to 60 time of 4.2 seconds compared to 5.8 seconds on the standard range. This is quite the difference of them both using LFP cells. I mean, it's likely with a more powerful motor in the long range, of course, but still. I would guess this would take a minimum of 75 kilowatt hours of cells to get these figures. I would also have thought that with that, the car would be heavier than the previous 2170 version, yet, as I said, it weighs the same. And this would end up making it the most powerful, longest range electric vehicle using LFP cells in the world, which is also quite impressive. But how did they do that? There's no reason for that to have happened. It would have needed an insanely upgraded drivetrain, which would be strange to introduce into an old model that doesn't sell very well. Therefore, I think LFP cells are least likely. So what's the other option? Well, there is one. CATL's new factory in Shanghai could have entered phase one production already, although we have been told very little. Perhaps production is low right now, and a small selling variant may be best to test this new battery. On the other hand, this is a massive factory with a capacity of 80 to 100 gigawatt hours a year when complete this year, which is a lot of cells to put somewhere. My theories in the past have been that Tesla will be using the M3P cells in the updated Model 3 Highland, but possibly this is a test first to see. I think part of the Highland update is to dramatically lower costs the M3P would help with that, as fewer cells would be required to achieve the same amount of range. As for the specs, then this does possibly work. There should be enough room in the battery pack as CATL are using structural batteries with the M3P cells, 
which means there should be enough room for the additional cells. In addition to that, the cells are using more energy dense cathodes, which means the range will be higher for the same size and weight cells when compared to LFP, which is also what we're seeing. And that might mean it also is the reason it matches the previous weight of the 2170 Model 3 long range, as there is a weight saving with a structural pack, and these cells have an energy density in between LFP and 2170. With fewer cells, it could certainly check out. The N3P cell is an LFP ternary cathode hybrid that doesn't use cobalt or nickel, which are two great elements to not have to use. Cobalt has plenty of issues and is scarce, and nickel is expensive. Instead, they use more manganese in the cathode, which has similar energy density to nickel anyway, except costs less and is more abundant. But this cell is not to be confused with an LMFP cell, but it's getting close. To be honest, the most likely answer probably is that it's just fewer 2170 cells, and Tesla are just not updating the weight of the vehicle on the website, which is probably the most boring answer. It should still increase demand for the Model 3 slightly, and potentially increase profits slightly too. But if it's the M3P cells, then we're looking at an entirely different ballgame. If they are able to generate this much range and be lower cost, then this changes everything we have found a real sweet spot for cost and range. My theory is that eventually Tesla are going to replace all the LFP models with the MP3 cells and the Shilin structural battery pack. It's just a superior version for the application they need. Then Tesla will throw all the LFP cells into the mega pack factories, which don't need structural packs or improved energy density. LFP is ideal for energy storage for many ways. Why would CATL want to replace M3P cells into energy storage? when it can be used in structural batteries with suitable energy density, it would be a sacrilege. By the same token, why would CATL want to build more LFP factories when they can make a better cell, the N3P cell, which appears to be better in every way for vehicles? It costs the same as LFP per kilowatt hour, yet weighs less per kilowatt hour. Elon said about two thirds of electric vehicles will have an iron based cathode. He didn't say they would be LFP. The M3P cell still has an iron based cathode. I hate saying the term as it gets thrown around so much, but the N3P cell is a real game changer in the industry. As I said before, it provides a real sweet spot. That much more range than LFP simply can't reach. And even when attempted, it weighs down the vehicle too much and starts sacrificing other areas like handling and braking distances. The N3P cell may be the right balance for this consumer. And when we start seeing vehicles with above 300 miles of range, it is suitable for the vast majority of EV buyers. The other issue for those longer range vehicles is they're simply not close to enough cells on the market with high enough energy density using nickel. Long range vehicles can't be scaled up. It's too capital intensive and simply not going to happen. It has to happen through iron cathodes. At least, of course, until the 4680 finally reaches high volume production, which we really don't know when will happen. The issue is the dry battery cathode, but we hear it may finally ramp next year, but we've heard that before. However, with M3P cells, Tesla is not so much at the mercy of the 4680 cell. And we're also hearing rumors that Tesla are going to build a new factory of CATL in Texas, which would hopefully be a 100 gigawatt hour a year of M3P cells, which may be used in the factory there, perhaps. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.